All right, what's going on, everybody? It is 3 p.m. here in Chicago Central Time. Hope you are doing well wherever you are. Today's date is May the 5th. It is Cinco de Mayo. And if I had thought this through a little bit better, I probably would have made today a uh, Taco Tuesday kind of day. But what I wanted to do was I wanted to do this Monday mukbang thing where I basically just eat a bunch of stuff uh, on camera or at least part of like today's conversation. And uh, I thought that this could be something I could turn into maybe a series, like a regular thing where I do it on Mondays. I didn't want to do it yesterday because yesterday, yesterday was May the 4th. And so I want to do a Star Wars theme. I didn't really even do a very good job of that, to be honest with you. I apologize. I let you guys down a little bit. But um, today we're going to move yesterday's Monday mukbang to today. So we're going to try that. Um, Cody Davis says, yo, what's going on? Watching while standing on the balance board. That's pretty cool. I think that's a good way to do it. Uh, a lot of people I know are foam rolling, relaxing, uh, and just hanging out that way. Uh, CV76 says, Wikipedia, putting the uh, Wikipedia definition of word mukbang. Um, yeah, and so um, I always thought that mukbang meant like eating room, because pong means room, but I guess mukbang, maybe it's different. But the Wikipedia definition is a little bit different, but that makes sense. Um, yeah, eat cast, <laughs> I think is a funny way to do it. Greg at a higher here says, yo, Fuzi. What's going on? And so what I thought I'd do is um, not as a way, like it doesn't have to be about Blake Seed bar based bars. We don't have to talk about the entire time. But I thought just kind of as we went along, I got five different bars. So like every four minutes, I'm going to try to eat a different one and try to get through them all. Some of these I've had them before because uh, my wife buys them too. But um, I became a Blake's Seed based ambassador. So full disclosure, they sent this stuff to me. Um, I didn't have to pay for these bars. They sent me a couple of boxes of stuff, a couple of different flavors. So I thought I'd try them out and idea is like every week um, do something that like people might be interested in a different product or maybe even if there's like a line of products, try a bunch of different things, kind of let you guys know how I feel about it. So we'll start today with a protein bar. I haven't had this one before. Um, I'm interested in the protein bar uh, about it. Blake Seed Base, though, for those of you who aren't familiar with it, uh, all their stuff is very allergy friendly, nothing uh, with peanuts in it, which is the, my biggest concern when it comes to snacks. Not because I, I don't have a peanut allergy, but my daughter does. So I, I try to be a little careful about with the stuff that comes into her house. All the stuff that she eats for sure, we're super careful with, but like the stuff that I might eat from a nutrition standpoint, I usually keep sequestered, you know, somewhere else in the house anyway. But just in case, you know, she's old enough now that she knows better, but I always just kind of been, been careful, uh, even for stuff she won't eat, that it's peanut free if we can. Um, so let me get this cracked open. The peanut bar, I'll try to do this away from the, the microphone so it's not so crinkly. Uh, but as far as protein goes, 15 grams of protein in it. So that's a decent amount. Good. I like to get anywhere between 10, 10 and 20 grams of protein in after a um, activity, uh, after exercise. This one is mint chocolate chip cho or chocolate mint. Don't say chip, just mint choc chocolate mint. So we'll see how it goes. Um, I just realized now that maybe this mukbang thing is not a great idea because I have to now eat a lot of stuff. But I guess that's how mukbangs go, right? People do it. So <laughs> it's pretty good. I like this. Um, definitely feeling the mint in here. So a nice minty flavor. Um, got some nuts, got some seeds, a lot of seeds in here. And it tastes more like a granola bar than like, not that these are granola bars, these are seed based bars. It tastes more like a granola bar than some of the regular Blake seed bars that I've eaten. So um, I just realized I don't have to eat really fast to be able to get through all these. Um, okay, so Guillermo Mignot says, I'm going to be eating with my mouth full, so I don't know how we get around that. So those of you watching, you think that's gross? I'm really sorry. I guess I probably should have watched more mukbangs before I did this to get a feel for like what are the customs. <laughs> but in typical fashion, I jumped in with two feet without a plan. So here we are. Guillermo Monia says, she's from Boston. Looking forward to watching the Escalante video. Cool. I thought it turned out really well. I really liked it. I ended up with a lot of footage because I went out for a long run. So I'm really happy with it. And I really like to shoot. Zero Borg says, I'm wondering if you have read Haruki Murakami's What I Talk About When I Talk About Running, because you mentioned books earlier. I actually was looking at it today um, in Audible, because 
lots of people have mentioned it to me. But I don't know. Do you think I need to read his regular books first before I read that book? Or can I just read that even though I don't, I'm not familiar with any of his work or her work? I don't even know. Lewis Cameron's coming in from Boston. Gregory O'Hara is trying to get me to eat them all at once. Like, like a sandwich? Like double up? Yeah, <laughs> Hi, everybody, buddy. Um, Tom Anderson says, yo, dude. Ramon Garcia says, hey, hey. Ben and G's here. Ben Ng. JZ8489 says, hey, beautiful day to stay home, go for a run. Awesome. Today's been really, like, chilly and damp and kind of raining. When I went for my run today, it wasn't raining, but everything was, like, kind of dripping wet. Everything was soggy. Whoa. Whoa, there's a giant score. And two items. Awesome. My daughter and I have been playing Emoji Blitz, Disney's Emoji Blitz game, so she's got a real hot score. That's awesome. Diogo Tanaka says, hello, hello from Brazil. What's going on? John Bryan, hey, hey. Jefferson inside got some good news. Hey, Kobuzi from ATL just finished last final of college. Awesome. Congratulations on that. You just finished your last final and you're here at a live stream. That's dedication. I appreciate that. By the way, this shirt just came in in the mail. I think it turned out really nicely. It almost looks like it's graffiti the way that like the print is on here. It almost looks like dripping like spray paint. So I thought it turned out really nice and it's subtle. You can hardly see it like most of the time. And, but then when you're looking at it, like straight on, you can see it. So I'm pretty happy with this shirt. All right. Let's see. JC8489 says, so you need a glass of water. I had one. I think it's over there. I'm gonna have to get up and get it. Um, Guillermo Mignon says, do I pre-carb bar and post-protein? I usually do Lara Bar before and Cliff Builder or RX after the run. Interesting. I usually end up eating a snack like beforehand. Oh, can you give me my water bottle? Is it over there? I think it's in the kitchen. It's in the kitchen. Um, yeah, I usually end up eating like a snack or something in the morning, like at breakfast. Um, all right, my daughter just helped out with some water. This is like, um, I've been drinking out of this. It's not Martin and it's in here. There used to be noon in here, but I just kind of top it up. So it's a Mar Mar uh, water bottle with a little bit of noon, very diluted noon. Wow, it's getting it's serious in here. Um, but afterwards, if I can't eat regular food, then I'll eat a bar or a protein shake. But I always prefer to eat regular food if I can. Um, Faded MFD said, did the bedtime tip for the iPad alarm solve my problem? I don't know yet. The baby's using the iPad. So we'll see. But I saw that tip and I like that idea. I'm going to check in there. This morning, we were noticing on the Instagram live stream that 625 every day, an iPad alarm goes off. But when I look at the iPad alarm and the clock app and the alarms, there's no alarm. So it was like a mystery. But Faded MFC's got some ideas. Hopefully that works. Daniel M says he saw a huge snake. The thing was massive on the run today. It was dead, but I was thoroughly freaked out before I realized that. Yeah. Because what if it just wants you to think it's dead before it pounces on you? So you got to be careful. Um, yesterday, we were talking about animals that we might see on the run. I didn't see Jabba, the fat rat, today because I went later in the day today. But there was news. We talked about how there's rarely anything like sometimes there's coyote sighting, but there was a cougar sighting recently. So not far from here either, like three miles from here. So no, was it three miles? I might have been a little bit further than three miles, but they talked about another time in 2008 when there was actually a cougar that they had to euthanize because it was like hanging out in alleys. We are, it wasn't far from here. Um, my mom's here. Hi, mom. How are you? Tim Anderson, feel sorry for your stomach. Yeah, we'll see. I think this one will be fine. Um, White Wings 05 says, ah, that looks really good in terms of the bar. He can't eat now, though, because he's going to bar from the run in 30 minutes. One time... I had like taken the day off early from work or something like that. And I'd come home and I went to our favorite little like burrito spot that's around the corner. And uh, I bought lunch for my wife and I, because my wife has always, not has always, but has worked from home for a long time. And then I like miscalculated like when I was going to need to run and when I was going to actually get home to eat lunch with my wife. 
uh, before I had to go like pick up the kids. And I ended up basically like eating a giant like one pound and plus burrito and then going straight for like an eight mile run. That was a rough day. I had a lot of uh, cramps. That day. <laughs> Ricky Nip says, hey, Kavuzi, love the channel and the content you provide. Awesome. Thanks. Um, Back bomb says, just taste each while answering. And it might come to that. It might do that. Um, so we'll see. So I think the next one that I'm going to eat is this raspberry one. These are the ones that I typically eat from Blake Seed Base. These are fruit and seed. And they, if you if you think that they're going to be like a granola bar and like like cakey almost or like more like um like chewy, like a cliff bar, they're not. They're very different than that. So that takes a little bit of getting used to when you eat these. But, you know, they're mostly seeds that are in here. I like it. Um, this one's raspberry. I've not had this one before. And see, in terms of um, some major facts, we've got seven grams of fat. I think is a good number. Um, not that much salt, which is surprising. I thought there'd be a lot. 20 grams of sugar and um, four grams of protein. So that'll be interesting. See how it tastes. A lot of the Blake seed based ones are fruity. There's a lot of like fried fruit in them. So they tend to be a lot sweeter. This one's very sweet. It's good. I like it. Um, and his Dunbar said, "Hey, Kofuz, you got a sub twenty-five k today. Awesome, but only just after nineteen fifty-seven. Take the win. Take the win. That's great work. Thanks for the encouragement the other day. No problem. I'm happy to do it in your fiftieth year. Oh, that's that's fantastic. Awesome news. White Wing says, "Ought to watch Beard Meets Food for his insanity monk bomb." I'll do that for sure. Edmir Espinosa is coming in for the Philippines. That's awesome. Luis Cameron says it's Ber Meb's birthday today. I didn't know that. Hmm. Cool. Tom, Innes, Tom Anderson says uh, congratulating Innes on his sub-20. And Tom got 2002 yesterday. So close yet so far. Yeah, you're really close. Like on a different day, you're right there. So that's good. Patsy says, no, no, that book is more of a biography. His other books are fiction. So I don't need to read the other ones first. Okay, Patsy says. So maybe I'll check it out. Because people have mentioned it really highly. And I was listening to a podcast with Molly Seidel. Um, she came in second uh, in the Women's uh, Olympic Marathon Trials. She's a big fan of both his fiction and his um, book about running. And so that's where I like, started really getting into it. I think it was Molly Seidel that said that. I'm not sure. I think it was. Yeah. John Tui says, OMG, I'm going to work off so I can't participate, but props for the book bomb. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> David Borg says, you could totally read um, Murakami's. Murakami, is that how you say it? Stand alone. Cool. Awesome. I'll definitely check it out then. It's a good, quiet motivation sort of book. We could all use that. Keeper of Vacation says, yo, yo, guess what shipped last night? His Hoka One One Rocket X. Awesome. That's cool. I can't wait to see it. Um, Cody Davis says, does noon come in a powder? Not a big fan of the tablet. I don't, I don't think it comes in powder. Although, maybe if you get a jug of it, then you can get the powder. But I'm not positive. It must, though, because I've seen noon at races before. And they're serving it in giant jugs. Or they're serving it up in all the little cups. And I can't imagine that they're like dropping in like in a big five gallon like Gatorade thing. Cooler tub. Like a hundred tablets. You know, that'd be kind of weird. So I think they do. I've only taken it as a tablet. That's my favorite part about it. It's a tablet. And I feel like the tablet dissolves well, which is very tricky. I think Goo makes a couple of them that are, are tasty, but um, they don't dissolve well. They leave a residue. It's almost like film. Um, so that there's like stuff in your drink, which I think is disgusting. Um, Gaki CGK DD says, tried low heart rate running from 135 to 4, 145. It was so, so. Yep. I've done. It sounds like you did it exactly right. Sorry. It's, it's, uh, eating all this sugar though at once is definitely affecting my mood right now. I'm bouncing off the wall already. I've only eaten two of these. Please someone says, Kapuz, any special plans when you hit 50,000 subscribers soon? Maybe come on to 50K? That was the plan. But, like, that race got canceled. So, or I think it did. 
there's a 50k 50 mile and i think it's a 100 mile as well race in a really small town in iowa um that was gonna be super hilly and on basically dirt roads but roads that are so like not remote or not used that they said there's sections of it that there's no support available you're not allowed to bring cars on it because the roads are kind of so iffy over there and i've been on roads like that in iowa and they're fun and they tend to get muddy and sloppy and messy so i was going to run that it was supposed to be like june 1st was the day of the run i'll check to see if it's still going but i was was, that was going to be the surprise i wasn't going to tell anyone about it it was just going to be a video that popped up one day you know i run a 50k so that kind of is uh, unfortunately gone that was the plan though that would have been fun Cody Davis says, there's a trail that I run in Central Florida that along, there's a long river and he see ga- sees gators every time I run there. Yeah, that's so that's so terrifying about Florida. Um, when we were there last time, I'm going to open this one next. Uh, pineapple. You know what? I'm going to save this one. There's two flavors. Um, this pineapple bar and this blueberry one, blueberry lemon. I've had them before. So I'll save those down in case we run out of time here. The next one I'm going to eat is the s'mores. I've had this one too but I love this one. So I want to make sure I eat it and get to it. Um, This is probably my favorite flavor. The nutrition facts are pretty much the same. Seven grams fat, 19 grams of carbs. Uh, Only uh, 80, this one has 85 milligrams of salt. So a little, quite a bit more than the raspberry, but four grams of protein. So more of a um, sugary bar than a protein bar, but this one is really good, tasty. Um, So we were down in Florida for a Disney cruise. And we went to Disney World first, and then you drive over to the coast to get onto the cruise. And as we were driving, we saw lots of like little like marshland, like swampy type areas. I mean, they weren't so swampy. It was basically like tall grasses and water. And there'd be people out fishing. And we'd also see alligators. And I was like, my sister had arranged for us to have a driver to drive us from one place to the like, from Orlando to like where the Disney cruise takes off from. And we were like, yo, yo, hey, do we need to call someone about that? Because there's an alligator really near that fisherman. And he was like, that's fine. Those alligators aren't going to bother anybody. And I was like, I don't know. I feel like we should call somebody. But no one else was worried about it. I mean, there was a highway full of cars, you know, driving by. And no one said anything. But I thought that I thought that was terrifying. Um, Martha says, you're going to have a sugar crash. Yeah, I sure am, for sure. This is delicious. This s'mores is my favorite flavor. It's good. Um, Martha says, Heiko Fuzzi, agree. The shirt looks really classy. Thank you, Martha. And her post run first snack is always a little yogurt or kefir when possible, which I learned the ideal balance of protein and carbs. I'm also a really big fan of post run yogurt. My wife makes granola. And whenever we have that, I take the yogurt, I take the granola. We have a whole bunch of like nuts and seeds. A lot of times we have chia seeds, which are uh, anti-inflammatory properties. And I like to eat that together. So that is one of my favorites to have a little bit of yogurt, especially if I can add a little bit of granola to it. It's like having like, like grown up cereal. It's kind of like having milk, but it's yogurt and um, it's crunchy. Like cereal is, it's a little bit sweet. So I like it. Louis Becerra says, instead of people going to see the cougar in the zoo, I think he misses seeing the people. So now he's watching people inside their house. <laughs> I'm talking about the cougar sighting in Chicago. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> but I, the cougar didn't escape from the zoo. The cougar is a wild cougar. I don't know where that would even... Where does that even come from? You know what I mean? That cougar had to come from a really long way and travel undetected for a really long time. But I suppose they're nocturnal, right? So maybe... And J. Mark Remy says, hey, hey, tried Kamut this morning to make Strava art. You were right. Very clunky interface on the desktop and Strava art is easier on city streets, much tougher in rural suburban areas. Yeah, with city streets, you have a little bit more options. That's for sure. Um, and the Kamut interface, I just wish it were better. Not that Map My Run is significant. Map My Run is significantly better. Not that it's great or as easy as I think it should be. But um, yeah, it, it, it was it was a little bit tough, but so is trying to make like a multi-stop route in like Google Maps, for example, as well. But I'm glad you tried that. I'm glad you backed me up, and it's not just me not able to use the app. Well, <laughs> I'm glad that you had I'm not glad that you had a hard time, but I I feel validated that someone else had a hard time too. 
Nathan says, how's it going? Sign up for a virtual 5K, so working on the distance. Awesome. Good luck. Hanzo says, who do you think would win in a marathon race, Kipchoge or Bekele? I think Kipchoge. Well, I think we talked about this. Uh, we've talked about it before. But my general thought on Kipchoge versus Bekele is because he's got a big chip on his shoulder, right? Um, I think he's anno he's annoyed that Kipchoge gets so much attention. That's my understanding, is that he's kind of like feels slighted by that. So he's got a big chip on his shoulder. But Kipchoge's got a huge amount of swagger. And I just feel like he's reached a level of like running enlightenment that like you just can't touch him. He's also two years younger, I think. So <laughs> there's that too. Uh, Recycled on Wednesday says late, but I read what I talk about when I talk about running before I read anything else by Murakami, but the novel hero was great too. So won't go wrong. Either. Good to know. Yeah. I think that's, that's what I'll put next in the queue. I think my next two are going to be that one. What I talk about. And I'll read um, How to Talk to Strangers by Malcolm Gladwell. I haven't read that one yet or listened to that one yet, but I'm really looking forward to it. Plus, I believe Malcolm Gladwell narrates that audiobook. I think he narrates all of his audiobooks, which I think is like, that's the way to go. And especially with someone like Malcolm Gladwell, who gets so animated when he talks, I think it's a good way to do it. Alex Williams talking about a noon and whether there is a... Um, powder version. The endurance formula is powder, which I've never had. I'm going to have to try that. Mmm. Travis Watson said, Matt Fitzgerald's new book drops today on Audible. I'm going to have to get that one, too. I need to buy more credits for that. Um, we should try to get Audible to, to sponsor this podcast, for sure. But, um, <laughs> um, they're not sponsored. They're not a sponsor. Um, <laughs> But I did see, I noticed that on his Strava and on his Twitter, he's got like a new, he had a new um, book cover as his profile picture. So I was like, oh, when is that? Come out? I haven't read that one yet. So that's cool. I, I can't wait to get that one. J. Mike Remy says, make it a solo, self-supported 50K. If I can do it, you can do it. Yeah, Mike, J. Mike Remy just did one recently. And I'm thinking that's probably what I'll end up having to do. I'm just really nervous about spending that much time outside and how, like, I don't really know how long that'll take. I mean, I have a guess. I'll probably run like eight minute, 30 second miles for 31 point something miles. So how long does that take? That's a lot of time outside, which I'm kind of nervous about. Today, when I went for my run after 6.30, like after the morning live stream, there were just so many more cars, so many more people, so many more things to dodge. It's got really frustrating. And like, I don't know, like, uh, I don't have agoraphobia, but like it's making a lot. It's probably the most sensible of the phobias right now. And so I'm just like afraid of like uh, public and outside spaces. Um, so that's that's the hard thing about kind of planning that. But I would like to do something big for the 50K. Um, John Bryan says, do I take any vitamins? Um, I, I don't. I take a uh, right now. Ollie, O-L-L-Y is a company. They make a probiotic gummy for adults. Um, sorry, I'm getting burpy. Eating all these bars at once. Um, mm -hmm. Probably not recommended. I'm going to go for this one, the pineapple. Pineapple snack bar. This is tasty. But um, I know that it's a, a very much on the sweet side. 21 grams of carbs, 6 grams of fat, 35 milligrams of sodium, so pretty low salt, and 4 grams of protein. Um, so, um, yeah. Oh, vitamins. Um, I've noticed that and my mom is a nurse and she's always trying to get me, mom, I'm sorry, but I know you're trying to get me to take more multivitamins and um, she keeps sending them to me, but they just kind of keep sitting in my cabinet. I never eat them. One of the things that I was doing very regularly, very like routinely um, was taking a multivitamin when I had vertigo, when I had really bad vertigo. And um you know, the, the vertigo went away when I changed my diet and started running again. I don't know which one it is, um, if it's both or what, but I've kind of like, and I stopped taking the vitamin incidentally. And so now I'm afraid to take vitamins because like about a year ago, I started taking the vitamin. I'm like, ah, you know what? I could probably take the vitamins again. How is vitamins going to hurt me? And so I started taking vitamins again very regularly. And I felt like I was starting to have not dizzy spells, but I would have like, it's kind of like when, uh, I felt like one was coming on a couple of times. You know? I just didn't want to go back to 
So I don't take a regular vitamin. So I don't like my multivitamins. Um, my vitamin D has been really low for the last several years, no matter what I do. And I spend hours outside. Now, granted, these days I'm very covered up, but I still am spending hours outside. So I should be getting lots of natural vitamin D. And um, I just don't understand why I'm low. And I don't know if there's a connection there with runners, but I think that a lot of runners have a little vitamin D and are taking vitamin D supplements. I would love to learn more about why that is. Um, so one of the things that I wanted to do before you know everything changed was uh, Jessica Reyes at Sugar Runs had done a blood panel. Um, like a running specific blood panel. There's a company that had contacted her that contacted her that she was working with. You go to like a Quest Diagnostics Labs, you give them a blood sample, and then they tell you like, you know, how your body is. And I really wanted to do that to try and figure out there's something going on. Mm, yeah, very pineapple-y. Almost like a, it's like candied pineapple. I love pineapple. It's my favorite fruit. I could sit down and just eat pineapple after pineapple. Maybe two pineapple. I don't know if I could eat pineapple after pineapple after pineapple, but I could probably sit down and eat two and just love it. I love pineapple. It's my favorite. This is like too sweet, I think, a little bit. But it's a good bar. Um, so, um, yeah, so that's how I feel about um, vitamins. I, I occasionally have a, I have a vitamin D supplement, and I occasionally take that. My daughter is also low on vitamin D, and she takes vitamin D in a liquid form regularly so i don't know if it's just all this apartment living that's doing it or what but for a wrap um so um blas grabnar says can we expect a 100k when you get 100k because you will for sure um i don't know that i'll get 100k i mean like the number even 50k is just like a weird imaginary number that doesn't make a lot of sense to me but um maybe i won't say no to anything anymore once we can go back outside again and safe way to do so, I'm going to try one of everything. Triathlon, I'll try it, whatever. I don't really know how to swim, but I'll do it. Um, 100K, sign, sign me up, let's do it, you know? It's like you're, we're all having a, a very slow motion, long-term near-death experience. Some of us are having death experiences, but we're all having like a weird near-death experience. And so I, I look forward to the feeling of enlightenment we all feel when we get out of this. Um, Blas Grabner said Strava Roots are awesome. I'm going to try and do some more Strava Roots. I kind of had fun with it. Luce Cameron says, Cody, you read the Nine Mile Marathon? I haven't. I'll have to look at that. Cody says, the shirt is looking nice. Can't wait till mine comes in. Awesome. I can't wait to see it. When you guys get it, t take pictures and tag me and I'd love to see them. Martha asks, have you ever tried scratch green tea and lemon powder hydration fluid? It's so refreshing and not too sweet. I haven't tried that one. Two brands that I want to try more of is You Can and Scratch. Um, you Can works with the Second City Track Club, I think, here in Chicago. Or for, they work with one of the track clubs here, the elites. And so I see people using You Can all the time here in Chicago. And uh, so I wanted to check them out. And it, sound, it sounded like from some of like the podcasts and other events that I had heard audio from at Marathon Weekend that they've been supporting. I think like there was a podcast that Meb was at too, because Meb used UCAN. He was one of the first like pros that they sponsored. And so like, I don't know, the more I learn about marathoning, the more I just fall in love with Meb Kukulski. He's just an amazing dude. Um, I admire him quite a bit. So basically I'm like, any if Meb likes it, I'll try it. So that's kind of how I'm at right now. Um, and Scratch is another one that I also like too because I feel like they have like a it seems to me like they have a more of a pedigree coming from the triathlon endurance sports and so like um, I feel like there's different kinds of knowledge that they've gained in terms of really long term activities and how the body behaves in more extreme conditions than in a marathon so I think mean, that they can do some interesting stuff with that, or I hope they will. Wrangler Pete says, Happy Cinco de Mayo, Capuzzi. Just ordered Saucony Mad River TR. Awesome. Ready right to hit the Phoenix Trails. Love the channel and insights. Good luck out there. Be safe. I'm sure you will. I always get lost anytime I'm out in the Phoenix Trails, but I have fun when I'm getting lost out there. Um, JC8489 says, Have you ever run a multi day or overnight relay? I've done a Ragnar relay, which I don't know if they have Ragnar where you are, but.
Sorry, that was a big bite. But you usually get a team of anywhere between like six and ten people. Um, it's like an Ekaton, kind of, or can be. And I've done two of those. One that was on the roads, and one that was at trails. The trail ones are way more fun, but those are a lot of fun. I love them. Um, Lewis Cameron says, gummy vitamins equals low absorption rate. That's true, but I balance low absorption rate and high cost with um, uh, ease of, what's it call it? Compliance. So like a pill, like a vitamin that I swallow or a chewable even, I'll tend to forget to eat those for whatever reason. But a gummy, I'll eat one of those every day. <laughs> I don't know. I guess I have a sweet tooth. My dad has a big sweet tooth. I never really considered myself a sweet tooth, but my dad has a big sweet tooth. So maybe I'm getting it from him. Motivation theory runs here. What's going on? Hey, hey, how you feeling after the 50K? Hope you're doing well. Um, Martha says, it isn't a natural probiotic like kimchi and yogurt, of course. It's a better than processed delivery like a gummy. Um, always better to get in food, right? Docs in the family say only vitamin D 2000 per day is a good idea. That's good. That's a good um Remember, I've been taking anywhere between one and three 1,000 unit um, pills, but never regularly. I might, on average, I probably average one about every 10 days, 1,000 units every 10 days, with spikes happening 3,000 at a time, like once a, a month or so. I don't know. Um, Mr. Germison says, Mike, you like Thai pineapple fried rice? Um, I'm not sure that I recognize or remember what that dish is. If I've had it before, I'm so I'm not sure, but it sounds like something that I would really enjoy. Um, Klaus Gramner says, you never get enough vitamin D. You can't get enough of it just by absorbing it from the sun. Everyone should consume some kind of vitamin D. Why is that, though? Like, what is it about? I mean, why aren't we getting enough of it in our diet? That's the thing. I'd rather eat it if I can, but I don't know what foods have vitamin D other than milk. And I don't want to, like, start chugging. Milk. Um, mainly because we have to walk to the grocery store. And uh, if we start drinking a lot more milk, I start carrying a lot more. Although lately we've been getting, there's a, a convenience store in our building. And so we've been just going downstairs to get heavy things so that we don't have to like lug it really far from the grocery store. Be safe. All right, last one. Blueberry lemon. This one I've had before as well. Not my favorite bar. Um, it's just very, very sweet. And like, I, I don't, I'm not a big fan of lemon flavored things, personally. Six grams of fat, 45 milligrams, 45 milligrams of sodium, 21 grams of carbs, and four grams of protein. But let's dive in. All right, we're going to support this here. What's going on? Martha says, you know, EP76 says, don't joke. Jen Formal says, loving Monday mukbang, but isn't it Tuesday? Yeah, I know, but I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to do a mukbang on like uh, Star Wars Day. So that's why. So I just moved it to today. I didn't want to wait another week. So. I might just always do this specific day because I was thinking, like, you know what? Trivia Tuesday would be kind of fun. But then I wanted to do the Monday mukbang on Tuesday. So maybe I'll just do the day on the wrong day every time. That might get too confusing, though. Uh, <laughs> John Bryan says, Meb and Bernard Lagat gave me hope that I'll be able to run good times in your 40s. Don't forget Abdi Abdurrahman. Abdi Abdurrahman ran with Meb. Like, they competed. They've been on Olympic teams together. So, right? Haven't they? I thought they did. So, like, I don't know that they're the same age, but they're similar. So, like, Abdi's doing amazing. He almost beat Jake Riley at the end. He came real close. So, let's see. Um, Martha says, Meb is a great person. He was a pacer at a race he, she did in San Diego. And about Scratch, it's one of the purest brands as far as ingredients. Cool. Yeah. I have been, Mel and I had the exact same travel calendar for like the last like four, like three months. And I just always kept just missing her. He was in Houston. I was running the race in Houston. I was going to go to, he had like a podcast, I think, or a meet and greet. Um, like at the expo that I missed for some reason. I don't know. I did something dumb. Like I didn't feel like waiting in a giant ride. Um, and then he was in Austin as well for the Austin marathon and I was there too. And he had a shakeout run, but I was, I didn't, I got there like a day late. And then I saw him again when we were in 
when I was in Atlanta for the marathon trials and I was super close to him. I was like, he was like signing autographs. Like and there was a fence in between where I was and he was, but I was like super close to him. And so it's like, he's getting so close. I'm like a weird stalker. <laughs> um, Wani says, don't know if you answered this, but are you thinking about getting the Saucony and Dropping Pro? I just ordered a pair today. So yeah, should be coming soon. I don't know when it comes, but I ordered it today. Jennifer H says, do you feel sick yet? My stomach is very full. I'll tell you that. And like the sweetness, I this bar is a little on the sweet side. It tastes really sweet right now. So, yeah. But um, I would say the pineapple and the blueberry lemon are my least favorite flavors. But love um, the s'mores flavor to wrap up the tasting for the day. The raspberry surprised me. I normally don't like a lot of raspberry stuff. But that one tastes really good. And the protein was tasty. Because it was like a different kind of texture than what I'm used to from um, Blake Seed Base. And it was 16 grams. 15 grams of protein. So that's a good number to, to take in. I think I can have that as like a after a run uh, food, I think. Um, Wani says, the mustache is looking good. As a fellow Asian, it's so hard to grow nice facial hair. It is. I've been trimming it. I trimmed off some of the longer whiskers here. But I left the full breadth of it. So we'll see how I like that. So I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, John Bryan says, yes, Abdi did make a team. And he almost beat Jack Riley. At the trials, and he thinks that they went to school together with Matt. Yeah. TJ Mark eighty seven thirty three says, "Softy website has endorphin pro pre orders today." Yeah, someone sent me an email about it, or a direct message on it on Instagram saying like they got an email about it yesterday. And I tried to find it, and I was like, "Oh bummer! I guess I didn't get the email, and I don't get a chance to buy them." And then I got the email today, and I was able to buy them today. And they have them in my size. It looks like they have plenty of sizes, so I don't know. Everyone, go check it out if you want to get it. Um, in the email, they had a quote from Molly Seidel saying it was like the best marathon shoe she's ever, like best ever shoe she could ever have to run a marathon. I don't know if they like meant to say it, have her say it that way because it's her only marathon she's ever run, but she did pretty, pretty good. <laughs> so, um, Martha says, I'm feeling a little queasy just watching you eat all those. Yeah. This is going to be hard when I do a gels day. And I have, have I taken, like, what happens if a person eats, like, 100 grams of carbohydrates at once? I know that we talk about a lot in terms of nutrition, like, your body can only absorb, like, 20 grams at a time. What happens if I suddenly put 100 grams in my belly? <laughs> we'll see. That's going to be next week. Um, Louis Becerra says, salmon, tuna, egg yolks, and cheese, good sources of vitamin D. That's news we can use for sure. Um, I'll have to... Make sure I can, um, well, I do eat a lot of egg yolks already. I do eat a lot of cheese. That's pretty much all my diet is. I eat a lot of tofu as well. Uh, Ebsco host says, are you growing out some shoulder length hair? Um, it, well, no, the top's getting very long. It's getting very messy and it's getting very annoying. But I'm just going to let it keep growing. I don't have it anywhere to be. So let the hair grow. Let's do it, do it at once. If I could trim it myself, I would. And I may. I might just get some clippers and just give myself an undercut, put a clip in like whatever's on the top, like a reverse scalping or a scalping kind of thing, or just cut everything off on the sides and then just leave what's on the top. Um, Kalisa, have you thought about having a cozy run club run day where we can sign up for a distance and we all run on the same day? Um, I haven't really thought about that. Um, I don't like virtual runs right now. Um, I know they're really important to a lot of people, and so that's completely fine for everybody. I have no problem with other people doing it. I just uh, don't want to inadvertently get everyone outside at the same. Not that I would be like thousands and thousands of people would be outside at the same time, but like generally for like run virtual runs, that makes me nervous when it's like, you know, like when people were talking about going out and running the Boston Marathon course or something like that on you know Patriots Day. Like that kind of stuff makes me really nervous these days, but. Um, we have talked about getting a, a, a run club or a group together on Strava. So I'll, I'll have to do that. Natalie Tom says, do I have a closet dedicated just for all your shoes? No, I wish I did. Um, you know, like everyone, I feel, I feel like everyone in the city is kind of talking about like, oh, I wish we had more space. Uh, and my wife and I are not immune to that. And she was like, you could have just to go, maybe you can have a room or a part. I'm like, if I could just have a room that has like controllable light, 
Um, that would be great. And she's like, then you wouldn't have to keep setting up and taking down all your camera equipment. I'm like, okay. Um, so we've been talking about stuff like that. That would be nice to have like a closet just for all the shoes or just a space where I'm like sequestered all the running. I just need to sequester the running stuff from everything else. Cause it's stinky and smelly and takes up space and all that stuff. Kevin, the screen killer asks, have I tried the new Pegasus 37? I have not. Um, uh, Jody runs says, what happens when you eat a hundred grams of carbs at once? This, and he has three pukey emojis. We'll see. Cody Stevens says, digging the trim mustache, my dude. Yeah, I. this was the first time I ever, I should have filmed it because I've never trimmed a mustache before. This was my first time. Um, motivation theory Rain says, I felt sick eating like eight gels in an ultra. Yeah, I've, ha I've felt, I've definitely felt that like on a longer run where I thought like I needed to cram in a lot of carbs and it just like brought a lot of gels. After a while, you're like, I'm tired of eating these. I could see that happening. Um, yeah, Martha says, maybe you should do tastings like olive oil samples in gourmet shops. So with gel, just a tiny taste of each one. You <laughs> don't want me to get type two. Yeah, um, that, that's what I, that's normally what I do. So when I've tested um, different gels before for like taste testing, like um, there's two ways that I'll test. One of the ways is I'll just buy a handful of flavors and I'll just bring them on my run and I'll test like that brand, that flavor. But um, when, sometimes I'll get from a brand like Univid, they'll send me like, here's all the, all the flavors. Um, then what I'll do is I will like pour them out a little bit at a time, just dip my finger in it so I can get a, a, a taste for the flavor and have something to clean the palate, just some water. Um, and that's what I normally do. And I'll take, I'll, I'll make notes. So for goose, I think that's what I'll do. Just, although I think at one point I'll hop, I'm going to try and eat like a bunch of them just cause I think that'll be fun, but maybe not next week. Maybe next week I'll just taste them all. Um, so we'll see. Um, Gazelle Espinosa says, hey, man, by any chance, is it okay to eat a little unhealthy sometimes while training? Like, I hadn't ate a hamburger for a long while till early today. Um, I, I think it's fine. I, I think it's fine. I mean, I think that you have to uh, weigh it in terms of, like, what are your ultimate goals and how does this interfere with your goals? Um, if you are, like, an elite pro-level runner, then I don't know how many hamburgers one should be eating because you're um, looking to get elite level performance out of your body. So it needs elite level fuel. Um, I don't know that hamburgers are bad for you, but I don't think that they're elite level fuel. And so, but if you're trying to run and perform well, work hard, but also indulge, indulge once in a while and enjoy life, um, then I think it's okay. Um, I also th think that like, if you're craving something, that's your body's way of telling you, Hey, something's missing in the diet. Um, and so like, Go for it. As long as your body's not telling you I need a hamburger every day, you know, maybe you don't listen to that. But like if all of a sudden your body's like, I need a tortilla chip today, a really salty one, then maybe you just need some more salt. So that's the kind of thing that my general approach to it. Um, yeah. Um, all right. So <laughs> CV76 says, hey, why are you outside? Kapuza made me do it. I didn't make anyone go outside. Stay inside if you need to stay inside. I've been trying to do all my runs early in the morning, so I'm avoiding people. But every place is different. Everyone has different kind of levels of comfort of what they want to do, what they need to do, what they're required to do by law. So, you know, you got to make your decisions. Uh, I know you're joking, Steve. Um, Brett reads this. How do we get the shirt? It's um, There's a link. It should be on any of the YouTube videos. If you go, it's in Teespring, so there should be a little merch shelf in between the video and the comments where there's links for all the merch. Um, otherwise, you can find uh, the Kofuzu Run Club store on Teespring. Um, let's see. Uh, Motivation Theory Running says, yeah, having a studio in the basement has been nice to have because you can control light, so you can always have consistent lighting every time. Yeah. Um, Natalie Tom says, eating granola bars right now and trying to match your count, but I can't keep up. <laughs> You're a true talent. That's amazing. That's so funny. Um CV76 is mukbang eating contest. I mean, I think that's really truly in the spirit of mukbang, right? Excess is what it's all about. And like, kind of like um, something that's a little bit beyond sensible, right? So let's go host. And this will be probably the last uh, comment that we go for for today. And I'll let you guys go. Um, so I'm a beginner runner that is ramping up the miles now. How do you deal with the poops? I did 10 miles of the day and uh, out of nowhere, around miles or seven, my body said, time to go and go now. Um that's a good question. It's something that never really completely goes away, I would say. Because um, right now, because I've adjusted my schedule, my body's still getting used to it. It's used to pooping at a certain time of the day. And um, 
right now that happens to be when I'm at about mile six or seven. Usually for me, it's right around mile five that that happens. And so right now I'm kind of planning for that and making sure that I'm running loops where around mile five, I'm near home. So that way it's a minimal disruption. Um, but the other thing is your body will get accustomed to it and come into more of a rhythm. At least that's been the case for me. And so um, I feel like the mechanical jostling you know, helps your body like maintain a level of regularity and uh, <clears throat> hopefully it becomes something that becomes more manageable over time. But there is a bit of a transition period where your body is still figuring out what is really happening, but it'll figure it out pretty soon. You know, your body protests. Everyone, you know, it's, uh, your body protests after a little while and then it realizes, OK, this is the things that we're going to have to deal with now. So I guess we'll have to adjust. So that's what your body does. And it will adjust. All right, guys. Um, thanks so much for tuning into the mukbang today. Sorry if like the eating sounds were gross. I'm going to go back and listen to it and see how just how gross it was. So hopefully it wasn't too nasty because if we if it worked out, I think maybe we'll try it again next week with the gels. I think with the gels, it'll be a little bit easier because I won't be like chewing on stuff the whole time. I'm going to use Martha's approach where I'm just tasting a little bit of each one and we'll we'll go from there. Um, Tomorrow, uh, if you want to check out the live streams in the mornings, every morning, 6 a.m. on Instagram, that's where I'll be. Or I'll be back here tomorrow at 3 p.m. Uh, hope you guys have had some good runs lately. And if you're about to go for a run, hope you're safe out there and have a good one. And I'll see you guys soon. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in today.